on today's Locked On Senators. People are mad online about our mock draft. Well, that's why we make lists, Ross, for people to get mad at. But a list you won't be mad at is our 2024 NHL prospect profile rankings continue today. They certainly do. We've got a trio of interesting players, and one has a bit of a connection with the Senators. We'll get into all that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 1046 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. A reminder, you can also follow the show on social media at Send Central on Twitter, locked on dot senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube, where a like, comment, subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today is Wednesday, May 15th, and Pilsy, the Boston Bruins avoided the inevitable last night, so we'll have to wait a couple extra days before nearly locking in their first-round pick. And Ross, that was about as close as it gets. Uh, it had shades at the end of that game. It had shades of that cup final between the Wings and Penguins where Flurry made that uh, save at the very last second. Yeah, because Sam Reinhart, probably the one guy on Florida you don't want to have the puck all alone in front of the net in the dying seconds in a one goal game. He has it, but Swayman comes up big with the massive save. So that keeps the Bruins alive. And I don't know if you saw it, Ross, but they showed the bench reaction after. And uh, Montgomery is just like, oh, Man, like, I can't believe that he saved that and we're still in this thing. So definitely exciting hockey, not to mention uh, the the late night game that happened as well. That's the one I wanted to get into where the Vancouver Canucks almost exhaled for a 15, 18 minute overtime intermission. But instead, it was right back the other way. And and what theater and the, the swings of emotions, everybody in the crowd in Edmonton to get the victory after all that and tie the series now going back to Van for game five. Can't go back down 3-1. Susie coming back from the suspension. And how about Leon Dreisaitl with 10 points in four games this series? Yeah, he has multi-point games in every single outing. He's huge. And just... One of those classic um, hockey gods moments. Uh, him and JT Miller are, you know, puck battle along the boards. Miller accidentally gets the knob of his stick, hits Dreisaitl in the face. He reacts, gets a penalty. Miller is pissed about it. He's pissed. He goes to the box. Who scores the power play goal? Leon Dreisaitl. Uh, and then so had that's something a to tough say- one for Miller. Then he had something to say to the bench as he was going by to give his own um, down down the handshake line. So that's hilarious that, yeah. um, you know, the game within the game. And we've been seeing that. That's such a physical, such an awesome series. And we've been watching Vancouver closely. Obviously, we're trying to form parallels between the Sens where they were the Canucks last year before Rick Tockett came in and straighten them out. And, well, of course, Travis Green's going to have to do it from the other side of that of a event if the Sens are going to be successful next season. I tease quickly off the top there that we are going to find out pro- hopefully in the next couple of weeks or days that the Boston Bruins pick will be 26th overall. Hopefully days, Ross, not weeks. If it's weeks, so that's not good for the pick. No, it's later if they win this round. So they have to lose one of the next two games yeah. to be able to know that that's going to be 26. And then we would turn our attention to Edmonton and Colorado If those teams win this series, that pick would move up one spot for each team. So there is a bit of variance, 24 to 26, if the Bruins lose one of their next two games. Pilsy, it was easier to figure that math out 
than it was to find out who the Habs should pick at number five because, my goodness, bonjour tout le monde at Montréal et Québec. Um, we saw your comments. They don't like Berkeley Catton, so that might be a, cost, uh, a Jesperi Kotkaniemi vibe around the Habs fan base if the pick is Berkeley Catton on June 28th in Vegas. Which is so funny, Ross, because we were – you know, we we aren't experts on other teams' draft needs, so we're just picking players we think will fit and players that we think are good in that draft spot. And we had a hard time picking, all right, who who are we going to give the Habs to? Like, we wanted – part of us was like, let's just give them a crap player, talk a joke Be about a how – yeah, joke about how uh, they're terrible at draft, drafting top-end players, and we can keep that going. But then we're like, let's – let's have some legitimacy here. Let's give them a good player. And then we landed on Catton and I was like, I don't want to give them that good of a player. And they, we were like, nope, we're going to do it. And Habs fans apparently hate that pick because it came out of our mouths. Uh, if it was, if it was locked on Habs, I'm sure they'd be like, yeah, great pick. Good job. But us senators fans, we know nothing, nothing. And they cannot believe that we would give them one of the top prospects in this draft. All good, all good. Just something hey, to keep in mind if you see the Habs. Thanks for watching. Look, we we That's appreciate cool. the the feedback. Honestly, it's it's good stuff. I actually missed the banter because once the second half of this past season came, it's like, what ground do you have to stand on? It's been four straight horrible Novembers, and you're just out of it. Like we were just taking solace in the fact that you beat the Habs every time they're on the schedule, nine in a row. But other than that, like it was hard to engage after the Ridley Gregg slap shot. Like that was the last like true hatred online between two fan bases. You know, we had it with Detroit earlier this year. The De Brink, oh, yeah. it was a nice appetizer to the David Perron situation. But this was the first time that Habs fans have had a f- have had like the soapbox to stand on because they're drafting before Ottawa, right? Like all season long, it was just you know automatic win on when it comes on the schedule. So. I'm happy to have Habs fans back and and yeah and enjoy it. So uh, yeah, let us know. Hey, Hab fan watching this, who do you want at number five? Go comment over at the mock draft. We'll uh, be happy to see that. But we will ask you if you're going to be commenting on a 2024 NHL mock draft trade. Let's not make the comment about a Zabanajad <laughs> trade. I don't know how that uh, played into everything, but that's fine. Yeah, it was two circles separated. That's the Venn diagram. It's right yeah, in the middle, trying I, to find almost, his home. It, it's like that meme where it's like, sir, this is a Wendy's. Like, sir, this is a 2024 NHL mock draft. This is not a Pierre Dorian revisionist history of the Mika Zibanejad trade. Our first ever conversation together yes, in 2016 yes, when we met. we met. Both of us That's were like, we that. love this trade. All Sens fans want to trade Mika Zibanejad and uh, the rest is history. Hey, you know who else was in our class that Kidding. day? Kidding. Haley uh, Ferguson, who now yes. worked out in Chilliwack, and I got a great thing in the mail. I want to show so everybody a little yeah. sense paraphernalia here. Uh, Vladimir Nikitin, you might remember, guest on this show, scored a goalie yeah. goal, goalie goal this year, and we got a commemorative postcard just saying, you know, where, when, how, and then a nice signed photo there. So thank well, you to Haley Ferguson. That's awesome. Well, in the act. Moments before Vladimir's life changed forever. Dramatic zoom. (laughs) (laughs) What do you say we get back some draft rankings, Pilsy? We got some three. Give me a little tease on the three players we've got coming up. Ross, one of these three players I have given four out of five stars in my official Pilsy star rankings. For the first time time. as we count down from 80. That's next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Policy Genius. Guys, Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. You want to save time, you want to save money, and you want to provide your family with a financial safety net starting today? Well, with Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year, and you get $1 million worth of coverage. Some options even offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. 
Policy Genius is going to help you compare options from all the best companies in America with licensed experts that are going to walk you through it step by step. You can easily compare quotes from the top insurers in just a few clicks. You can find the package that best suits you. Look, your work life insurance policy may not offer protection for your family's needs and you may not get to take it with you if you leave your job. So Policy Genius is going to give you an unbiased opinion from their support team. They don't have any incentive to recommend one company over another, so you can trust that they're going to make a right choice for you. And don't just take our word for it. There are thousands of five-star reviews on Google. So check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub, located right in the heart of the Glebe. This is the place to go when you want a pint, a meal, or just a straight-up good time. You can go there to watch the game on any of their TVs. You can also visit them for any of their events, from live music every Saturday to trivia night on Wednesdays. You also can get into the darts tournament happening on May 26th at 2 p.m. Entry fee, there's cash prizes. It's double elimination cricket format, the darts tournament coming up at the Glebe Central Pub. For more on all these great events going down at the Glebe Central Pub, did I mention 75 cent wings all day Monday? How about $5 taco nights on Thursdays? You can find it all, glebecentralpub.com slash events. You can also follow them on social media at the Glebe Central Pub. So go visit our friends in the heart of the Glebe, Glebe Central Pub, 779 Bank Street, let them know Locked On Senator sent you. The vibes are free at the GCP. All right, Pilsy. We are still deep in the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Let us know in the comments who your Stanley Cup final is going to be this year. My two teams still alive. I got Rangers and Oilers. Pilsy, how are yours doing? I'm pretty sure I had Rangers and Stars as my pick, so I I think I'm alive as well. Okay. That's good to hear. We're still alive here, kicking, dropping down from 80 all the way to number one. We're keeping our eye out for the Elite Prospect Draft Guide. They announced that's coming out soon. Yep. Always a great resource. The 2024 Black Book from our friends with HockeyProspect.com. That's another great resource. There's so many different avenues Russ. that you can find uh, information on all these great prospects. Remember what year is it? I forget, but we were looking through the EP Draft Book absolutely love it uh as far as we're concerned you can't find more in-depth coverage for the draft and you accidentally hit print on it and you ended up print like what it ended up being like 600 pages or something oh, like it was just, nuts. just under 400 yeah it's it's a, a mammoth so i'd like to apologize for the trees that suffered because of my uh, ignorance i would really like to apologize for that won't happen again big digital copy guy there we go and we're going to enjoy right it you responsibly this draft season coming in on our locked on senators nhl draft rankings at number 74 from the u.s and tdp it's brody zemer who just captained team usa at the world under 18s had 12 points in seven games was a factor each and every um, time he was out on the ice what were your initial thoughts looking into the profile of brody zemer Well, Ross, first off, uh, it's very interesting that in our rankings, Brody Zemer and Christian Humphreys were side by side. If you watched yesterday's episode, you heard all about Humphreys, but they even have the same average ranking for us in our rankings uh, when we average out the entities that covered them. So these two players, USNTDP products, very similar and I like Brody Zemer a a lot. I mean, this guy put up 70 points in 61 games. He's committed to the University of Minnesota. So obviously he's got a good path heading uh, in front of him. And the captain of Team USA at the U18s, he had 12 points in seven games. And of course, they won silver, losing to Canada in the final game there. So 
Brody Zemer, this is a guy that I think is going to have a lot of attention as we get closer to the draft. What's his top skill? If a team's drafting him, what are you getting excited about with, with Brody? I would say, Ross, if uh, if you're looking at Brody Zemer here, probably the attribute that people are going to comment on the most is his strong leadership qualities, right? Like to be captain for Team USA at the U18s, there's a lot of great prospects there. And that definitely points to how highly thought of he is. So if you can get a prospect that already has been put into leadership uh, positions at a young age, that goes a long way when uh, when you're looking at kind of a longevity of a career and how you think he might fit into your locker room and different things that you think your culture maybe needs. I think teams will look at Zemer and, and really take seriously that he was chosen as the captain for U18s. Right wing, right shot, stands 5'11", 190. He's a February birthday, and he's ranked as a 45th overall pick for Chris Peters from Flow Hockey, highest among the people we use, the seven. And then we've got elite prospects down at 79. Bob McKenzie had him just outside of his most recent January 22 ranking. So all that to say, pretty wide range, 45 to 79, unranked on a few as well. The average is 62. But you're going to get a player who, like you said, is an organizational piece with some upside. Seems like some scouts, the ones who are higher on him. Heck, Sportsnet even has him at the 29 spot. They've got Mm. him as a first-round pick. I think that's a little bit high. That's probably Sam Constantino, I'm guessing. That is Jason Bukala or Bukala. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing oh. that, but uh, another scout on Sportsnet saying that uh, he's an infectious player. He's quick. He's fast and creates offense at even strength in the power play. So he's got commitment, hockey sense, and seems like he can play in all situations out there. So you're going to get a player. It's just a matter of, you know, how patient are you willing to be? Because it seems like this will be at least two, maybe three years at uh, Minnesota before turning pro, which there's nothing wrong with that. You just want to see the development getting better and better, but he's obviously going to do the right things away from the puck. That's going to give a coach confidence to put him out there in important situations. Yeah. I think a lot of scouts really talk about how uh, this guy plays the game the right way. And usually when, you have guys that are in leadership positions, they put it upon themselves to play a full 200 foot game, right? Like usually you don't have captains that are out there cherry picking, just looking for offense, not playing hard on uh, D not back checking, not for checking. Like typically that doesn't happen or else you don't usually get put in those leadership uh, positions. So definitely he's a guy that plays well defensively, but EP really applauds his shot, like especially his ability to get that shot through screens and using different combinations, one touch uh, uh, shots, so one timer, snapshots, toe drags, like this guy is able to get his shot off in any different scenario. And obviously like 27 goals in 61 games is pretty damn good. And Clearly, he's the type of guy that is going to be able to put the puck in the back of the net for you, but also make sure he's playing hard on defense and is not going to make it easy for opponents to do the same to him. As you do in every single one of our draft profiles, five stars out of for the Ottawa Senators to potentially draft this player. Yes. So for Brody Zemer, I've got three and a half stars here. Uh, Usually, uh, typically when I do three and a half stars, Ross, it's a reminder myself that I think the player is is better than average, but he doesn't get that four stars just because I don't know where the Sens would draft him, right? Like I, you mentioned that uh, uh, Sportsnet had him at the end of the first round. Certainly, I would not be comfortable using uh, the Boston pick for that. If anything, maybe you think about the second rounder, but still, I I think... We haven't fully done our coverage of the guys that might be ahead of him, but I still think that'd be too rich there. So three and a half stars is what I put for Brody Zemer here. What I'll say so far, and Brody Zemer does come in number 74 on our rankings. To me, he's got the most upside of the forwards that we've done so far. So out of Humphreys, Zether, and Shatan, I would put him above them. And I would also put him above Linus Erickson, who we may be talking about later in this show but Brody Zemer um, it's going to be great to see what he does next year at the University of Minnesota Brody Zemer comes in at number 74 on the locked on Senators draft rankings all right a pair to come including a defenseman from the Oshawa Generals and maybe a Swedish forward 
That's all next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is the official online sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. You guys already know that we're big FanDuel guys, and you can be a big FanDuel fan as well because it's playoff time in the NBA, in the NHL. Baseball is in full swing in their regular season, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers can get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks whether you win or lose. You gotta love that. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. We mentioned yesterday we were looking at uh, the games last night. Ross, I don't know if you put your money where your mouth is, but you said you like the plus numbers for the Bruins. That would have been some green numbers in your account if you followed up on that. So you can see if you have an idea of which way the momentum is going to swing in the rest of these playoff series. Only one game tonight, uh, Colorado Avalanche versus the Dallas Stars. Colorado trying to stay alive here. Can they get it done? If you think you know, why not head to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Check it out today, guys. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Before we get back to our draft rankings, I want to remind everybody that you can follow Locked On Senators wherever you get your podcast. Like, subscribe, comment really does help the show grow. You can also find us on YouTube where we are putting out our individual draft profiles beginning this weekend. So if you missed any of them, you can check those out there. And hey, leave it run in the background. Make a playlist. Always appreciate all the support here from all the citizens. And we will be getting back to our Send Central Citizen segment sooner rather than later. Got a couple DMs recently, and it's about time. It's been too long since we've had the voice of the Senators fan base on the show. All right, back to our Send Central NHL draft rankings. And coming in at number 73, Ontario Hockey League defenseman, Luca Morelli, playing for the Oshawa Generals, who are owned by a minority owner, of the Ottawa Senators, Rocco Tulio, but Luca Morelli, he's an offensive juggernaut at that level. Yeah, definitely. When you look at uh, at the points for Luca Morelli, Ross, uh, certainly he's putting up points. Uh, Sixty-seven games, he had six goals, fifty-one assists, good for fifty-seven points. And when we're looking at uh, these prospects, Ross, typically the prospects we look at from the OHL. From their minor league teams, usually somewhere in the GTHL, that's very typical. Uh, usually after they're done with their minor league team, they have, I don't know, five, ten games in the OHL, and then they get their first OHL season. Not the case for Luca Morelli here, as he already has three full OHL seasons under his belt, 187 regular season games. And what I like about Morelli, Ross, is when you're looking at um, prospects, uh, especially defensemen that have that much experience, you want to see their progression year over year. So first year, 2021, in 62 games, 12 points, only 12 assists. That's fine, getting your feet wet here. And then next year, in less games, he more than doubles his points from 12 points to 28. And then Ross, this year, like I mentioned, uh, 67 points and then he gets up to 57 points in in this one so this is this is a guy that's doubling his points year after year that's pretty impressive for a d-man he's eighth in the ohl among defensemen in scoring this year and and he's just a guy who i think his skill is going to transition eventually i think that he's again at this stage in the draft 73rd on our rankings it's a guy who's going to be a project you're going to have to wait at least a little while but a right shot defenseman with good hockey IQ and a guy who's just showing that development continuing to get better. Now, one thing about that is he is one of the oldest players in the draft in October 2005 birthday, 6'1", 180. Um, and a guy who Craig Button likes more than anybody else among the seven rankings that we use, he has him up at 40 on his rankings. Bob McKenzie has him at 57 and elite prospects at 87. 
dare I guess that his skating could use a little bit of work. <laughs> I mean, yeah, with the EP, if he's down there, that's probably the case. I, I didn't really see too many people uh, knock his skating, Ross, so I don't think it's a detriment to uh, his development, but maybe that's an area where he doesn't necessarily excel in. With Luca Morelli, you're getting a player where I th- I think where you're going to use him is important. And I don't think that you can rush this guy to, to pro, even though he's one of the older players. I think you're at least looking at what, two more years in junior and then well, coming up. That, that'll that be the max, right? Because he's already got three full seasons. Right. True. So how would you develop him if you're a team? Let's say a fan's watching this right after uh, their team just just drafted Morelli. That's a tough question, Ross, because I feel like it depends on where your team is at prospect wise. Like, let's put it into the Ottawa Senators perspective. Um, The Sens need prospects. Their prospect pipeline is absolutely bare. So I think they would be a team where they could rush him into Belleville a little sooner. But if you're a team that has deep cupboards, like let's say you're, you're one of the rebuilding teams in the East, you could probably take your time here and then get them into the mix a little bit later. Although... I think this is a guy that at six foot one, 181 pounds, he's not a massive guy by any means, but certainly not a small guy either. So I think he could play in the pro level, especially if he bulks up a little bit more as well. But what I really like about uh, Morelli is he's so crafty with the puck in the ozone. Like I saw one replay where He's behind the net in the ozone with the puck, which you don't see defensemen do very often. And then he curls out and then draws defenders towards him. They think he's going to wrap around. And then right before he wraps it around on net, he spots a guy open in front and passes it to him. Boom, goal. And uh, the players on the other team are like, how did that just happen to us? Like, what's going on here? So this guy is very patient with the puck on his stick. He's quarterbacks, the general's power play. And... I like that he's able to hold the puck and make the decision. All right. Is my best opportunity here to shoot it or should I hold on to a little bit? See if my teammates can get open and work on a pass here. Now, some scouts have kind of knocked him being like, all right, sometimes he's got to make a quicker decision and just rip that on net and hope for the best rather than hold it, hold it, hold it. And then he's just kind of, I don't want to say wasting time, but he's just eating up time that could be generating offense instead. So that's one thing that maybe Morelli um, through watching video and stuff be like, okay, there's an instance where I just got to shoot that. There's an instance where I can hold on to that. So little things like that, where if you have a guy that's going to quarterback a power play, you want his decision-making to be a little bit more decisive. I agree with that. And what I'll say about the inflated point total, and this is not taking anything away from him, but he plays on an elite team. They're currently in the OHL finals, 20 games. And when you're looking at the assist disparity where it's like, how many of those were, is he putting it on the tape of Callum Ritchie? who's just an absolute hmm. superstar at that level and just getting them. But I still think there's a lot of upside from him. Is this Pilsy your four star Senator? I'll, I'll get to that in just a sec, Ross, but uh, currently the generals are down three, nothing to London. Unfortunately, this has been a tough series for Morelli here as he's a dash six with only one assist. So, That kind of points to, look, when your top defenseman, or at least one of them, isn't performing, you're going to have a hard time winning games, and that's happening up against the London Knights here. Um, That is to say, though, even though he's struggling in this series, Ross, this is my very first four-star prospect, Luca Morelli. I like this kid. Like I mentioned, decent size, right shot defenseman. We've only been talking about the point totals here, Ross, but... Funny enough, I read a bunch of um, scout reports that mentioned, although this guy doesn't put up points as much as you would want, which I thought was confusing. I mean, 57 points in 67 games, pretty damn good. (laughs) Um, A lot of them point to how great of a defender he is. He pressures the puck in the D zone, plays a physical game. So you got a defenseman that has all this experience, puts up points, but really is applauded more for his defensive play and has decent size, right? Shot guy. Like I mentioned it, the Ottawa Senators prospect pool is bare. I don't think I would have an issue at all picking this guy with the second round pick and, and getting him in the mix pretty soon here because two way right shot defensemen are hard to come by. So I really like uh, Luca Morelli and I think he's someone that the Sens could eye with that second round pick. I feel like I'm playing devil's advocate for you today, but I look at 
two-way defenseman that the Sens have drafted in the past a little bit higher, and it's been JBD, Lassie, Ben Roger, right? And yeah. that's kind of given me a little bit of pause. So I think I'm I'm once, twice, three times bitten. Now I'm shy over here, number four. But if, hey, if Luca Morelli's the guy, I hope he becomes a great Ottawa sender. But if your team just drafted him, be patient. And I think there could be some very big dividends with Luca Morelli, who comes in at number 73 on our 2024 NHL draft rankings. Coming in at number 72 on the Send Central NHL draft rankings, we've got our second Swedish centerman so far, Linus Eriksson from Jurgarden. And I like what I'm seeing from Linus Eriksson. Yeah, there's a lot to like, Ross. Uh, when you're looking at Swedish prospects, so now we're going to we're gonna get into this as we get deeper in our prospect profiles, Ross. Uh, you and I tend to be baffled sometimes with how prospects are developed over in Europe, but it's a whole different world over there, right? Because they got, they got pro leagues and the pro teams have to decide, is this guy actually going to help our team or is he just a young gun with a lot of potential and we're not going to see him after this year? So do we play him a lot? Do we invest in him or do we just have him around because we know he's going to be gone after? Well, Linus Eriksson, you got to give a lot of credit to him. 29 games in the Allsvenskan League is pretty impressive for a guy his age. He played more, four more games there than he did in the J20 National League. In the Allsvenskan League, he put up three goals, eight assists in 11 games. And the first thing, I don't necessarily look at the points as the first indicator, Ross. I look at the ice time. And this guy ranged from seven minutes which ironically, that game, Ross, where he only played seven minutes and three seconds, he scores two goals. It's his biggest goal performance of his entire time there. But then you look three games later, mind you, overtime game, this guy played 20 minutes of ice time. So like he's kind of all over the map here, but clearly is a guy that the coaching staff in Jurgarden in the All-Svenskan League trusts. And that goes a long way for a centerman trying to make his way here. Corey Bronman is so high on him. 24th overall on his rankings. I'll get to why in a minute. Bob McKenzie, very similar to Craig Button. Button's at 63. Bob is at 65. Elite prospects all the way down at 92. But the reason why he's playing those minutes and why he was the captain of Team Sweden at the World Under 18s is his versatility and leadership. He's a guy who can play in all three zones and all three offensive positions. I think he's a guy that a team who's looking for a Swiss Army knife is going to be happy to add. I don't want to do any sort of player comparable with Linus Eriksson. I'm not sure if he's ever going to be a a 40-point guy at the NHL level, but he's a guy where you can plug and play, and if you have to move him for a certain number of games up into a top-six role, I think he can play that complimentary, just strong four-check, back-check, like do all the little things that coaches will find trust in. And I mean, it's obviously going to be a common theme among players that are captains. They're selfless. They want to lead by example, but I do think that a team is probably going to select him I, I think above where Bob and Craig have them, where they have 65. I think like I'll be surprised if his name's still on the board after 50. Wow. Okay. That, that's funny because I think I have a different approach. I was saying I think where Bob and Button have him is probably where he's going to end up here. But there's just, ahead. there's going to, there's going to be in this draft such a wide range of lists among teams. And it just takes one to have him work Pronman is. It just takes one. And if you're looking at it, you're like, we had this guy in like the mid 20s. Why is he still there at 40? I think a team could be pretty happy if you have a, a deep enough prospect pool or sorry, a thin prospect pool that you want to like add it. He's like the perfect depth guy, I think, where it's like he can play all three positions. And I think he has a, a low risk. The ceiling might be a little bit lower, but the floor is pretty high. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I could see a team like Detroit liking this guy, right? Like they have a heavy Swedish influence. You know, they like those uh, two-way players like a Marco Casper type. I know he's Austrian, but uh, I'm speaking more like the two-way uh, guys. And uh, Linus Eriksson, I think, is a nice two-way player. Um, and yeah, his defensive play is what allows him to have that respect from his coaches. And 
he's not just a defensive player, though. I, I, a couple of highlights that I was able to find of him, he has a really good long-range shot, and he's confident enough to rip it from the, from the top of the circle, which for a young guy playing in the Allsvenskan League, that shows that clearly he believes in his shot. Otherwise, his teammates would be like, dude, what are you doing? Ripping that puck from that far, pass it, or do something else with it. But he's able to score from there, so you got to love that. But most scouts point to the fact that he's a very good passer. He's able to find his teammates in sweet spots, hit them on the tape with the puck, and able to create offense that way. I I project him as a third-line defensive player that can chip in offensively if he has a sniper on his line, right? Like, yeah. I think this is the kind of guy that teams are going to look at, and they're like, all right, if we can get a third line, and this is how I like to construct my lines typically, you want a defensively responsible player, you want a sniper and you want a playmaker. Well, you might have a defensively responsible player and a sniper all in one, or a, a playmaker, sorry, all in one guy here. So if you can hook him up with the right line mates, Erickson could have some success for sure. He's a disher when you look disher. at his goals versus assists ratio. Pelzi, how many stars for Linus Erickson as a potential Sens draft pick? So as I mentioned, I think I'm a little lower on him than you are. I only gave him three stars here. Three stars typically is me saying, nice player. I don't see any overwhelming skills. And I don't think the Ottawa Senators will be in a position where it makes sense to draft him. So uh, three stars for me. I'll go with three and a half. I'll just put a little oomph on it. But I don't, I'm not banging the table that you have to have Linus Erickson, especially if you're the Sens, where I think the Sens should be swinging more on upside because they have a lot of depth pieces that are similar to Linus Erickson. All right, Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Yes. Final thought for me. Oh my God, did we almost witness one of the worst collapses in Hockey Canada history yesterday. A 6-1 lead over the Austrian team. And this one ends up going to overtime. The Austrians score five unanswered goals in the third period, Ross. I don't know if you caught this game or saw the highlights, but it was a wild scene. Like... I, I was just, I didn't watch the game. I just uh, was keeping along on Twitter and following the the stat sheet. And I saw 6-1 in the third. I'm like, okay, this is such a classic Canada versus Austria game. Probably going to end up 8-2. And then I'm, my phone is, notifications are going off. Austria scores. Okay, they're making it close. Austria scores. Okay, this is fun. This is cute. But then they Marco Rossi ties it up with less than a minute left. Now, luckily, Ross, I don't say this very often, but... It's good that John Tavares stepped up here and he scores the OT winner uh, like 15 seconds into overtime. But if that if Team Canada loses that game, that's an insane story. And Ross, at this point, they have to put Ridley Gregg in this lineup. This team needs Ridley Gregg. It's a joke that he's not there. Absolutely absurd. We've had so much fun watching Pinto and Brady do their thing and Sanderson with the uh, United States. We need to get Ridley Gregg in the mix for Team Canada. He was awesome at the World Juniors when he yeah. got to play there. So and hopefully we'll see that from Team Canada coming forward. Just one, one more note. Austria had an empty net. You have an empty net specialist in Ridley <laughs> Gregg. He's not going to miss those. So get him out there. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Come on. What are you doing, Canada? Wake up out there. Can't be blowing 6 1 leads. Thank no. goodness that they were able to finish that off. World Championships continue. We'll discuss that later on this week. Draft rankings will continue and a whole lot more. Thank you so much for listening, watching, subscribing to the podcast. That's Brandon Piller. I'm Ross Levitan. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day.